Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lizard Brains Podcast. I'm your host, DJ Allison Drini, and I'm joined by my co-host, Tom Garman. Oh, he's back. <laughs> what is up, Tom? How's it going? Dude, I'm good. I'm feeling very demure, uh, very mindful. Demure. Feeling very, yeah. How are you feeling? I feel like I have to Google what demure is. What does that mean? <laughs> Use it in a sentence. I don't actually know either. I'm quoting a video. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even know what it means. Oh my god. It's a it's a very reserved, modest, and shy. Oh, typically a lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typically oh, oops. a lady. <laughs> I <laughs> no wonder Whitney threw a, a, a laughy face in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? I'm going to have to say I don't feel very demure. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm not drinking enough water. I don't know. But I've had like a headache for like almost a week now. So hopefully that goes away at some point. Gross. Yeah. Not the best. Is it still still happening right now? I felt fine all day today, and then uh, I was um, putting together a data pack for coaching, and then I went and mowed the lawn, and I, I honestly, the rest of the week, I don't know what the headache was. This is literally, I just ran myself ragged today, so that's that's where we're at. I think that's why I have a headache right now. Be you're allergic to mowing the lawn. Yeah, I am. That's why I can't do it anymore. You hear that, Christine? <laughs> I mean, dude, I cannot fathom. I can't fathom having to mow a lawn. I mean, I hardly do. Life. Let's be honest. I do it like once a month. It's a freaking mess. That's true. I've seen your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad you know for who? my neighbors. I like once Christine and I are in our position where we can just like write a check for somebody else to come do it. I'm doing it. Not for me. I don't care. Obviously, I don't care if you saw my lawn. I'm doing it for my neighbors because I just feel everyone's lawns look so beautiful on my on my street. And then my lawn just looks like people don't live there. Do um do you have an HOA? No. Oh, but let it grow. <laughs> you got like a mullet house. A mullet house. Yeah, it's uh it's it's sometimes it's neat up front, but it's a party in the back for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a mullet. It's my mullet property. <laughs> I like that. I just I, I just can't imagine I've lived however long of my life. The last time I mowed the lawn, it was a chore when I was like 15 years old. I hated I, I like I, having to mow my lawn would be such a life change. I don't think I could handle it. I hated mowing the lawn when I was a kid and I would do our lawn for 10 bucks and our neighbor's lawn for 10 bucks. So it was 20 bucks a week and when I was like 12, that's like 80 bucks a month. That's a shit ton of money. $80 a month for a 12-year-old. You need to find some 12-year-old <laughs> mow your lawn for you. Dude. Seriously though, I might put like a picket up in front of my lawn like Looking for child willing to work nope, for nope, money. Nope, 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 nope. Backtrack. That's, nope, that's not what I want to do. Huh. Seeking child labor. <laughs> Seeking child labor. Yeah. For, for, for lawn of... care. Seeking child for lawn care. And I think my neighbors would like, like sacrifice their children to keep my lawn maintained. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of canvassing house to house for lo mowing people's lawns, you're canvassing house to house to find someone to mow your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Slow Carlos goes, uh, get riding lawnmower, put cones in the lawn and pretend it's an autocross. Okay. I always told my parents if they got a riding lawnmower, I would totally mow everything. Nah, no problem. It didn't help. It doesn't help. If I had a you zero a turn, mower? maybe, you know what it is? Once I'm like walking, cause my lawn, my lawn's tiny, right? Tom, like, look, I went, we started the podcast at, like 8 35 and we even bs'd a little bit i was i was in the lobby on time at 8 30 is when we said we were gonna start the podcast i didn't put my boots on till 8 05 and i mowed the front lawn and uh like a quarter of the back lawn and then the the mower's battery died because i was going through like a jungle and i blew everything off <laughs> in like 25 minutes it really doesn't take that long it's just it's like literally just going to do it i don't know why that's like such a struggle for me to just like go out there and just do it. Cause it doesn't take any time. I just find it as an annoyance. It's because you're not accomplishing anything new. It's yeah, the same maybe. as like maintaining a race car versus installing new parts. Yeah. Or like fixing the same thing you fixed before. Yeah. Like if you had to be taking your bump stops in and out of your car, every single time you wanted to make a setup change, you would be pretty tired of 
taking your bump stops out. Or if you just had to replace a transmission like every other weekend, that would be pretty gold too, wouldn't it? It might make yeah, who you has to do that. It might make you feel like you never want to actually like own your own race car again. It might give you it, <laughs> it might give like you the trauma like, coming back up. <laughs> it's my <like> trauma. <laughs> yeah. uh, how many re- how many weekends straight did you have to replace a transmission way back when in 2020? 2021? One. Well, it ended up, <laughs> I mean, there was that one killer week before Road America where it went in and out of the car like three times because the shop I was taking it to uh, literally couldn't figure out how to put it together until I just reached out to somebody, um, uh, Nick Kors, uh, that races like a eighth gen Civic and like a time attack. And he had a guy in Pittsburgh. So I took it to his guy and his guy had it like, functioning perfectly normal in like an hour and i took it to the shop like over and over and over again and they kept messing it up and they they were in pittsburgh too so it was a long drive and i would come home late put it to, put it in the car and i could i didn't know if it was functioning until i got it in the car so it was just that one killer week um but over like the course of the year counting that killer week where it was in and out of the car three times uh, like eight times i had it in and out of the car it was brutal Gross. dude yeah so, oh, transmissions, man, cars in general, you had a transmission issue this weekend, Tom, right? Oh no, it was brake My team did. Yeah. Your team did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, for mine, how was your weekend? What'd you do? I, I've never went hiking before where we like set out with like backpacks with like little water bottles with like a little camel pack straw thing. And we like all official. Uh, me and Christine went hiking because you know, we're going hiking for a wedding. Like we have to hike to the area where we're going to get married. So we're like, hey, maybe mm-hmm. we should hike like once in our life before we go do this uh, and get married. So we're going to we're going to start hiking. So it was actually it was actually really nice. Uh, where'd you go? Um, <clears throat> Christine. Don't say Ohio. <laughs> I mean, it was in Ohio. We went to a waterfall that I didn't know was a half hour from my house. So it was like just south of Cleveland, search waterfalls, like south of Cleveland. I think it was like near Blossom Park. I'm not entirely sure where it was. We just followed Google. And the next thing you know, we were like in the woods. Sure. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> I know very descriptive, but, uh, yeah. but it was, it was really nice. I think it, <clears throat> I think we walked for like hour and a half, two hours. And it was like uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill. It was like actually way better exercise than I thought it was going to be. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I was like, yeah, I can walk for an hour and a half. No problem. But it's the, it's all the hills and like you're, you kind of like, uh, like balancing on different rocks as you like, like go off the path. You're, oh, don't go here. And I'm like, haha, watch me. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It was, uh, it was, it was really nice. I, me and Christine, we went, um, in 2018, we went to Hawaii. And that, that was the trip where I, I knew I had to marry Christine because we uh, went off the path that said, like, don't go off this path at some, like, big national park that was in Hawaii. Uh, we were on the island of Maui, and we were going to see – I forget what the, the thing's called. It's like a spike that comes out of the ground. It's called, like, Io or Eo or something like that. S- somebody in the hmm. chat, please help me. Um, and there's, like, a – you know – manicured area where you like walk through the woods to like get the best view of this like geographic feature coming out of the ground. And I could see a path going like outside of the fence. And I was like, let's see where the path goes. So we went out there and there's other people out there and it like goes along the river. That's like, and the river's really steep. And we just kept going up and up and up and up the hill. And we probably walked into the woods for like an hour. Um, we were just chatting and talking and everything. And and that was like kind of the moment where I was like, yeah, I kind of want to like, I want this for the rest of my life. That was like the moment where I was like, yeah, me and Christine, were going to get married. And then in 2019, I proposed to her. So. Mm, cool. So it kind of, it kind of gave me those vibes again. Cause we were like just walking through the woods and just chatting and talking and stuff like that. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy hiking. I feel, um, I feel like it's an activity I don't think of. But then when I do it, I'm like, oh, this is really nice to just kind of walk around. Yeah, I was away from stuff. And... Exactly. I was telling Christine that w- we should just do this like after work, like 
someday. Like, like we both get out of work and we got like two hours to kill. Like, let's just go for a hike. Like we, we'll bring little headlamps in case like we take longer than we think we will. But we'll like, cause there's like <laughs> guys, people give Ohio shit, but Ohio's like actually a really nice place to live. We have like, uh, like parks and, uh, like nature preserves and stuff like all around us. And we live, uh, five minutes from the airport and, uh, 10 minutes from Cleveland. So like, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. The, the last time my parents visited, we, my mom had looked up some things she wanted to check out and there was this like field of corn, with like a bunch of, um, corn husk, uh, sculptures in it that made it look like it was out in the middle of nowhere. And it was like beautiful to walk through. It was literally like in front of a strip mall and stuff. Like some of them were chintzy, <laughs> but <laughs> it was really silly, but there was a waterfall that was kind of nestled between like a highway overpass and a subdivision that you like park and you walk down. It looked very similar to where you guys were this weekend, where it's just like super secluded, but you know, you're not very far from anything. And uh, yeah, I agree. Ohio is pretty cool. It's not pretty cool. Ohio is pretty, pretty fine. <laughs> yeah. And we're right yeah. next to the turnpike pretty, and we okay. don't have to drive around any uh, giant uh, features of the earth that makes our drive way longer than it should. True. It's pretty good. Uh, the last, the last, the last hiking story I have is, I wanted to go hiking. I was in LA for something for a couple of extra days, some, something to do with Honda back in the day. And the two PR managers from Honda and Acura wanted to go on a hike with their significant others and somebody else. So the six of us go on this hike and I thought like, we're going on a hike. Kind of what you just did. We were on a hike for like six and a half hours. Ooh, I was sweating my ass off. We walked like a forever up this hill and then forever back down this hill for like, I think we hiked like nine or 10 miles, but it was a significant elevation change that day. And I was like, I never want to do that again. That's too, I want to do the, I want to do the Ohio hiking. <laughs> I'm Where? not cut out for this LA hiking. Oh, LA hiking. All right. Uh, yeah. I have, uh, I, I once upon a time, like hiked like three miles in my barefoot and it was on an accident. So, oh boy, <laughs> it was bad. How did you end up barefoot? Oh my God. I'm still mad at my friend. <clears throat> We went to Sleepy Bear Dunes and I knew nothing about it. I was just like, like tagging along. It's like Northwestern Michigan and there's these dunes and it. Like eventually you end up at Lake Michigan and I've never been to the dunes before, but my buddy was there and I was like, well, what do I need to bring? Cause we were all like cramming into a car and he's like, he's like, he, he's like, just bring a water bottle and, uh, like some flip flops. And I was like, all right, cool. So get there. And there's a giant sand hill and we're like running up and down it. We're like throwing the football down it and like trying to catch it and like just being hooligans. I like go through that bottle of water like instantly. And then my buddy's like, let's go to Lake Michigan. And we're like, well, how far is it? And he's like, it's just over the dune. So I ditch my sandals because the oh. sand's nice and soft. And I'm like, this feels nice on my feet. But then as we like kept walking, we'd go up a dune and you could see Lake Michigan. And then, but before that you'd see another dune and you're like, okay, well, then you go down and then all the way back up that dune that you just saw. And then you, you could see Lake Michigan, but then you see a, another dune that you go down and then all the way back up. And you do that for like, I, I don't know how long it was, but when, when the, the sand was getting really hot, it was getting really hot outside. I didn't have water and my feet were getting cut up uh, from, cause at some point when you're walking on sand enough, like your feet just start to take the toll. And also there was like shards of rock and they were like, you know, those sharp pointy kinds. And so my feet were getting yeah. all cut up. They were getting burned. I didn't, I needed water. Somebody along the way gave me water. Cause I saw that they had like two waters in each like backpack. So I was like, Hey, excuse me. I'm very sorry. My friends, uh, trying to kill us all. And I can't, I have no <laughs> spit in my mouth. Is there any way I could have that bottle of water on the side of your backpack? And she goes, Oh, bless your heart. And like hands me a bottle of water. And I'm like, Oh, thank God. So that, Peace, yeah, man, they have some more. Can I have some water? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I, uh, we, we finally get to the lake. <laughs> we finally get to the lake. That water disappeared. I don't know how long we were walking, maybe like two or three hours, or at least it felt like that. And it was so hot and I was still super, super thirsty. That one bottle of water, I think I shared it with like a friend. I drank Lake Michigan water because I thought I was like going to pass out. I Ew. was so thirsty. Yeah, I probably have some parasites, but um yeah that was uh, that's awful. the lizard in your brain <laughs> there it is you know what everything changed since then that's when i became interested yeah. in motorsports 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> like Spider Man, but with some sort of lake parasite. <laughs> uh, it loves race cars. I don't think it's a superpower. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah. So I still give my friend shit for that because I was like, "What do we need? Oh, it's just over the dune, and then we're all walking, and some of us were bare feet." Yeah. So he still gets shit. Rich, I don't know if you listen to the podcast, but <laughs> I still haven't forgotten. Yeah, I, I, I haven't forgotten you, <laughs> son of a bitch. So, yep. That that was a bad experience hiking. It's much better when you have like shoes and water. You just and your significant other ten miles from home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's much better. So yeah, that's basically nice. what I did. I did a, a lot of eye racing. Uh, my eye rating went up like another hundred eye rating. I'm on like a little bit of roll. I actually lost all of it like today. So oh boo, no. Yeah, get back on the sim. I've I so I've been um uh coaching somebody and I'm trying to get them to do uh official races because I think that's where eye racing you get like the biggest impact is is like when you're actually racing people. So many people just do yep. laps on eye racing and they never actually do the races. Uh, and like, that's fine. But like, that's like, that's like 30% of what iRacing can offer is just like a driving simulator. Cause like it mostly drives like a car. You can learn the tracks like pretty well, but the racing that comes from it, like the, the sense and all the reps of like all these scenarios that play out, like that's where, that's where iRacing shines the most. So I've been trying to get somebody to do, um, uh, like get their D license and do like the rookies Miatas and whatever. So I jumped into a Miata race last night and I ran into an Australian where like, it looks like he just blatantly crashed me. And then I called him out on it after the race. Cause I didn't know what happened. So I like kept the mic quiet. I was a good boy. And then after the race, I'm like, what? this guy just like literally drove through me. And then, so I called him out on it. And he's like, what? You did this on my screen. And then so we were like kind of mad at each other. But then at some point we realized that we had like 300 ping from each other because he's in Australia and I'm in Ohio. And so then it was like, okay, we just obviously the game was just completely confused where our cars were and that that's why we crashed. So I lost a bunch yeah. of I rating there. And then um, and then uh, today, then so somebody somebody else from Australia killed me uh, uh, right before I mowed the lawn. So. Sounds like you need to avoid Australians. So the video I recorded uh, for my coaching uh, person to show him what an official race is like is going to be highly accurate considering he's just starting out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this a person who's already done wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing? Yes. Okay. So they'll probably end up... Uh, I don't know. Do you feel like if you've done wheel-to-wheel -wheel and you get into a simulator... Will you be more frustrated with the other drivers or, or less, like more likely to be able to find your way? I think you'll be more frustrated because you're probably. I think so too. Yeah, you're probably used to people having a little bit of um, self preservation. Yeah, yeah. And the, like both of my incidents were caused by like the internet, just like not like. The internet can only be so good when it's going around the world. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, and especially like racing Miatas. I think Miatas are terrible things to race with when like you're racing people around the world because you, you generally tend to race like inches off of each other. Right. Yeah. And so like the, like I racing honestly does the best out of anything on the internet as far as like racing against people around the world. Cause most of the time it's fine. There's just this like, there's these like couple hairpins on Okiyama, which is where the track is. Where like, it, I just think the way that the um, the 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 game like keeps track of the cars in the hairpins, it doesn't quite do it because both the incidents happen the same. Where I'm on the inside, and then they they turn into my left rear or right rear, uh, depending on the one of the hairpins, and I can't turn because they're just leaning on that tire, and then I just get spun. It like it literally happened yeah. the same way both times, and it's on their screen. They probably don't even see that. I probably just like end up in their car, and then I like fly off to the side, and they're like, "Go, oh, that's weird," because each time their car was like not affected. Well, this is why I don't play i racing anymore, because I can't handle that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what? I drove to third I again. Put up, I put up with them. it for years enough. I don't need to do it anymore. Tom's putting his foot down. He doesn't need to do it. 
Yep. Anyways, I recorded a video of me um, me getting spun by Australians, and uh, and I sent that sent that to the coaching student. He went like, "Yeah, nice. it happens, but have fun. Hopefully, your race goes better than mine." I actually told him. Right. He's like, he's like, "All right, so the goal this week is to do one race," and I'm like, "Actually, your your goal is to do two races because the first race is gonna be a shit show." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good advice. Yeah. It's like, be prepared to give it two. Be prepared to give it two. Yep. If you if it's just um, one and then you like just stew on that, then like you're probably going to have a bad time. But but if the first one's great, quit while you're ahead. Like, get out of there. Yeah. If you're like, get out you of know the what? Rig, that go was to bed. pretty good. <laughs> but you know what? It, yeah. in, in that video that I sent, so I, I had some good racing and then just like weird internet things. And then I like caught the pack again and then had good racing again. So if you just like ignore the weird internet thing that like killed a bunch of i rating um then it's like it's fine it's like i think it it shows like okay cool i can see how this uh this racing online can like help my real real world racing which is what i hope comes from the from that video cool so all right tom um, you had a more interesting weekend than me i wouldn't call it more interesting i did do i i did real i did real car real racing instead of fake car real racing whoa what <laughs> i feel like you just punched my brain can you say that again think, think about it i did real car real racing instead of fake car real racing oh okay sorry i think i think i didn't pay attention for like half of that and then when i came back to it it was like whiplash <laughs> <laughs> copy yeah i was uh i was at vir for the champ car 24 hour and dude, I had the easiest 24 hour of my entire life. You want to hear about it? Yeah, let's hear about it. So they changed. Uh, you did this race last year. We have an episode about that where DJ got like heat stroke and almost died. <laughs> go, go check that out. <laughs> it was 52 episodes ago. Yeah, literally do the math. Uh, so this year it was like 15 degrees cooler, which was like just the right amount to make it not miserable. And... Uh, Let's see. So we ran this, the three cars again. And instead of last year, do you remember they ran like noon to noon or something like one to one p.m.? Uh, this year yeah. they ran. Well, no, this was, year they ran 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. Wasn't it earlier or did, did they start later in the day? It was either. I thought it was noon to noon or 11 to 11 or something like that. But okay. it was like the middle of the day to the middle of the day. Well, this time they did it 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. So we, we raced like from sun up all the way through the day. And then we did the night stint and then like. It was barely sun, sunrise when the checkered flag came out. But I got my stints from, let's see, 11, no, like 10.45 to like 12.15-ish. And So uh, that's p.m., right? A.m. Like I got in at like 10.30 a.m. or 10.45 a.m. Oh, so you started the race? No, I was a second driver. Okay, um, I lost track of the timeline here. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So the, the race started at 9 a.m. The 9 first driver okay. started. I was a second driver at like 10 something. And then I got out at 12 something. And then I got back in to do my second stint at, I think, 8. It would have been like 8. And I got out at 9.45 or something, 9.50. And then I was done. And I didn't drive after, I didn't drive after 10 p.m. So I barely drove past halfway in the race. And then I slept basically a normal night and i got up early in the morning to make sure i was available and they were like nope you don't need to be available so i was just around and then we finished the race and i cheered with my team that we won we won i'm very excited about that uh two years in a row and then i drove home completely refreshed and totally good to go <laughs> you didn't even have like a racing hangover or anything at all no it was so weird it was i had not been in the car for so long it wasn't even like i was driving that same race Wow. But then you, obviously like our car came off and I was like, oh yeah, I drove that car. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was kind of strange. I was expecting to be pulled back into like, you know, oh, get in at six in the morning or something. But we had six drivers. Everybody would, that was on our team was either racing for Rockwell and IMSA this year or last year. So we had like a pretty stacked Oh, lineup. that's pretty stacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was, I like, I almost didn't want to say that because like in our event leaning up thing. Because you can only look bad if you don't do well. Yeah. <laughs> With like a lineup of IMSA drivers in a Porsche Boxster at a Champ Car race. Well, you did lose a... Was it the first driver that lost the brake line? Yeah. So the first driver in the first hour and a half had a caliper fail. So we went six laps down before the first stint was done. And we were like, crap, this is going to be rough. 
but honestly the attrition was really high for all the, t the top teams it seemed like so there's like two or three bmws that are always really fast they had problems there were two corvettes that we thought would be really fast they were both out before we were um when we broke our team car went to the lead by like a long way but then they lost the transmission halfway through the race too so we we ended up coming from six laps down to winning by 12 laps over the duration of the last 22 hours of the race that's got to be uh i bet the team that broke the transmission was kind of bumming a little bit they were and it's always awkward when it's like your teammates who are now like they're in the same pit box and everything it's just like yeah you're like oh there's you got, know, we got conflicting yeah, oh, yeah you guys here. would have been there you know like we, we wouldn't have caught you kind of th you're like yeah i don't know how to how do you make them feel better about it? I don't know. It's nothing they could have done. Honestly, do you do you think you would have caught them? Because you guys ended I think up we winning by them. a pretty good margin. Yeah, we were. I think we were three laps down from them when they broke, so we had already made up three. And it was halfway. And we ended the up race? doing. I don't. Yeah, something like that. So I think I think we could have caught them. It would have been fun to have like the top two cars mm -hmm. in our team be yeah. in the front. Because then our our third car ended up finishing third overall or fourth overall. So it would have been all three cars there in the top five. Like, it would have been really cool. Yeah, that would have um, been cool. But yeah, overall, it was... Uh, I felt like I contributed. You, I, I, I know I've shared before with these team events, it can be a little tough because sometimes you can leave the event not fully knowing if you contributed to the event. Yeah. Like, you can be a, you can be a warm body and you can, like, push the ball down the road, but did you actually influence the, the outcome? And both of my stints, I made up a lot of laps and I felt like I did a really good like efficient job i didn't hit anybody i didn't go off track i didn't even <laughs> touch grass this year whoa um were you even yeah, trying like, uh some would say no <laughs> <laughs> some would say no <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you i was um uh, todd Cayley asked uh, when he checked in you had fastest lap in the car did it stay that way it did yes but that's not i don't know how many people got todd. i got one clear lap of my entire stint and that had happened to be the fast lap of the entire race for the team i don't know if that means that no one else got a fast lap you you, you have yeah. no idea so. and it's not like the car was fast in a straight line if you watch the live stream at all it's just like like you would you would beat people on the brakes and in the corners and then if you left the corner with them you kind of just drove yeah. next to them dude i gotta tell you they added a little more front camber to those boxers that we've been racing for like two and a half years now mm -hmm. i forget how they got it but they said they got a little more camber in the front I want to race one in GLTC with like power to weight. Oh yeah. It was so good. You saw the video, right? You yeah. said it looked really good. It looked really good. You, like, like it had I want a to get you in one of those. Those. Yes. It was so sharp and you could just like breathe on the brake pedal and it would rotate underneath you with like, Oh, right around your hips. It was so fun. Mm. I loved that car. Oh, I'm thinking um, about it. That sounds fun. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of what other, um, we had, we had one teammate. He was really quiet. I, I never really got to talk to him during the race. Um, but he was a captain of a boat that goes to uh, Antarctica and he lives in Antarctica between seven and nine months out of the year. What? Yeah. And I was like, so I asked him cause he, Let's he, he have was him on the podcast, kinda... Tom. We were talking, we were talking about having interesting, like, uh, people like maybe people. outside of motorsports on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like so how'd you get into the racing stuff and he's like i don't know i was bored and then goes on to like tell how i got into into racing and then a little later on i was like so what do you what do you do and he's like oh I, i'm a captain of a boat i live in antarctica and i was like tell me more about that i don't even have questions yet just tell me stuff about that and he's like yeah it's okay <laughs> I don't even have questions it's not that interesting Hold yeah on. but i had i i got i gotta look up get, how many people actually live in antarctica and he said, um, he said, I get to hug penguins every once in a while, but that's about it. Oh, hold on. You cut out for a little bit, I think, Tom. He just said he gets to hug penguins. Oh, that's it. like actually hug them? I thought you said hunt them at first. And I was like, well, that's a little fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's international waters. Okay, so that was, that was like the most interesting. I didn't, he didn't really tell any interesting stories, unfortunately. But uh, I want to go to Antarctica now. So he showed me some pictures. They kind of live in this dorm building. So um, he lives. He doing... lives there in the winter. I assume so. If he if he lives there seven to nine months out of the year, and well, he was racing with us in September, it's south. He probably gets so the summer off. Yeah, south. That's so that's summer down there. So there's five thousand around five thousand people during the summer, which would be our winter. 
uh, mm -hmm. live in, in Antarctica. Huh. That's, there you go. Uh, okay. I, I don't know what the latency is going to be like, but it would be cool when he's at, down in, in Antarctica if we have him on the podcast. Sure. I'll, I'll try to get a hold of him. We never exchanged numbers or anything, oh. but I had to tell that story. Come on, Tom. <laughs> I can get a hold of him. It'll be fine. Okay, okay, um, okay. You know when the scrum of the race actually starts going and then there's like three cars worth of three drivers. We had 17 drivers, I think. Like, I don't even know who was driving what car at what point. Yep. Couldn't tell you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Um, that, that makes sense. So then the other kind of amusing part before the race like really started was uh, IMSA is at VIR this weekend, like the one three days from now. And we were champ car for a 24-hour race at VIR last weekend, three days ago. So they were like, no joking dead freaking serious dude like do not go off in the grass do not tear up the track do not leave a mark on the track that's not supposed to be there like we cannot make this track look bad before imsa <laughs> so instead of having like all of the gravel traps you know that, that are normally around and like sand and grass and stuff they put five pound sandbags in rows what? off the track so if you went off the track you were going over curbs of sandbags just like don't 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 right and it worked, dude. No, like hardly anyone went off. Like almost all the all the flags were for mechanicals. Uh, How many yellows <laughs> were there? Like, they used to do that all the time. Last year there was a huh? ton of yellows. Last year it felt like it was like every ten minutes there was a yellow. This time they were they were longer, but way fewer. I would say. Like we had, it, honestly, I gotta say, VIR seems like it's on a little bit of a journey right now. But I don't know that that's very good. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, like you're saying with the staff? There, their staffing, it was slow. It was really, really, really cautious, which I get, like it's champ car and stuff, but it just seemed like it took forever. The gate staff was poor. They have like security prowling, like it's a freaking, like, oh, I don't know, like city street. Were now, they, I, were it, they it being just feels scooter a little icky. Nazis? Were they being scooter Nazis? I remember Peter pulled out, um, oh, no, it wasn't Peter. It was somebody pulled out a scooter and then somebody came by and was like, hey, you can't, you can't ride that unless it has a pass. It's like that's, uh, VIR. Yeah. yeah, like they're generating revenue off of people having scooters. It's like, guys, yeah, and then what are the Whitney wrist chunks listening? This? Uh, Whitney's per like, we had five different wristbands to go on track that one day. Why? On Friday. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so I don't know. VIR left me unimpressed this weekend. I hope it's not just like a, I hope it's an anomaly. But in general, uh, the whole like, hey, we're just going to put a bunch of things that are going to break your car right off the track. Don't go off track. It like worked. It was great. And then people didn't go <laughs> off track. That's actually uh No, and I love that it was like they basically were like, "Hey, Ims is here next weekend. Like don't screw this up for us." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I wonder um is there any champ car marks that we should be looking for on the Imza broadcast? I don't know of one. No. You don't know of one? Is there no. going to be a Porsche I transmission only saw... laying out there somewhere? <laughs> I should have hid one. That would have been good. <laughs> I hid one. <laughs> yeah. Did you put a lizard brain sticker um, on a guardrail or anything anywhere? I put them on our car. Oh, I should have. Ooh, guys, I got an interesting, another little like tidbit from the weekend. So when you go to VIR, DJ, do you remember when you're in the, the, the main paved paddock? Yep. If you are looking at the front straight, so then on your left would be like where hog pen and roller coaster are. Yep. The bathrooms that are on that side of paddock. Like under the garages? They have, no, not the garages. Sorry. They have that whole barn that's like showers and there's a men and women's bathroom yeah 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 gotcha above that is like a apartment and somehow rockwell got that apartment for this weekend so we had that to go sleep in and stuff and it's really quiet somehow it's pretty far off the track it's really nice i forget why i'm telling this story what did we talk about does it does it overlook like south uh oh south ben i should have put a sticker in there that's why i was gonna say i should have put a sticker in there no it, it overlooks it's kind of looking up roller coaster Cause I, when I was, uh, when I was at VI earlier this year for, uh, I forget what company, but they were like throwing a party in one of those houses mm. that overlooks South Bend and, yeah. and I got randomly invited. I forgot who invited me. I think it was Kobe shield. And so I'm just went and it was just like the who's who of everyone was in there. And I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And the apartment, literally, it, South Bend was so close. If I, like, built a nice yeah. paper airplane and the breeze was going the right way, I think I could have, like, landed a paper <laughs> airplane on the racetrack. 
It was so close. One of those good ones with the paper clip on the front. Yep. Yeah. You get, and then you put the little flaps in the back. Yeah. Um, so those those are the um, chalets is what they call them, I guess. Or uh, No, there's something else they call them. I forget. But they're building two more of those that like wrap around South Bend, too. Ooh, cool. Those were in construction over there. But they're super, super nice. This place is not quite as nice as those. Okay. Because it, it was really, really nice. I was like, holy moly. And I, I remember uh, I asked... Uh, I, I wish I remembered the company that was obviously their advertising, whatever didn't work. Cause I don't even remember who was there, but I asked them like, how 80, much, I don't think it was 89 X. I don't think it was 89 X. Oh, okay. It was, it was some, um, it was some other group. It was like a motorsports group, something. I don't think it was 89 X though. Um, cause I, I, I don't think Kobe was there in an 89 X capacity. That's like, a that's like Kobe's, uh, Kobe shields. Uh, he, he's running like an automotive store. And it's called a job job. Uh, yeah, that's that's the one that like pays for his bills and stuff. Um, so. Yeah, so anyways, it was just like super, super, super nice. But the, the price of it wasn't completely ridiculous. If like you put like four or five people in there, like it'd be kind of pricey. But like you're at the racetrack. I remember it was only like a thousand bucks for like the weekend. And obviously that's like a time trial, SCCA time trial national event. So it's not like the highest populated, you know, biggest demand place, obviously for like an IMSA race or whatever, that would probably a fortune, but yeah, but for just well, the, though, cause the actual owners of them come for that. Yeah, exactly. So the, but for just like a regular club weekend, those chalets were uh, pretty nice. Maybe we should look into it Wait, at one point. One. Tom, I keep, what? I keep forgetting to bring it up. Uh, one of our listeners reached out to me and said, we should do a meetup at solo nationals. I would love to do that. So we should pick a time and a date. Obvi I think like Wednesday is the, like the obvious time because that's when everyone's going to be there. Yep. Dude, okay, I'm, I, I see it. We'll, we'll brainstorm about it offline. But I think now I, I can confirm I know what I'm driving at Nationals now. Ooh. So now we have our schedules <laughs> all laid out and good to go. When are you driving? So yeah, we'll plan one. Guys, I'm driving F Street at Nationals. In a bitch and Camaro, I'm so excited. Oh my god, I'm so excited for you. I'm driving Dave Montgomery's Camaro at Nationals again. Uh, what, uh which what means you, you guys dodged a freaking Civic bullet there in D Street. <laughs> Lucky us. I'm already feeling like I'm gonna win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling like a wiener. <laughs> I, I I won the the what is Tom Drive lottery. I just keep the winning going. No, 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 no. Um, uh, okay. So that means we can plan, we can plan now for when I'm going to be there or I was the wild card, I guess. So, yeah. So wait, what days are you driving? What, what days does F street drive? I run Tuesday, Wednesday, second heat, and I announce Tuesday, Wednesday, fifth heat. Got it. So I have, I've completely relinquished all responsibilities Thursday, Friday. I'll probably leave earlier now. Okay. Is that going to, how do we get to solar nationals so fast? I was going to, um, did you book the Airbnb yet? I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah I still okay. have it. Okay. <laughs> Are you still uh, getting it for the whole week? Yeah. Okay. Why not? I'll need I'm only missing one night, really. I'll need a place to sleep on Friday. Oh, I didn't book it through Friday night. Okay. Fine. I'll just leave early. Whatever. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not difficult to please. Um, before we get to that anymore, I have one more thought from this weekend that has me thinking a lot. One more uh, note from this weekend. So when I'm doing these endurance races, a lot of times, obviously in Champ Car especially, we're one of the fastest cars on track and we're doing a lot of passing and not getting passed a whole lot. But it's kind of like playing OutRun or like that Cruise in USA game where you're just like, you're kind of flying by people at different rates of speed and you're just kind of like in your zone and whatever. But I realized this race that I was spending the entire time I was in the car wanting a clear lap. I just wanted a clear lap. Like, I just want everyone to be out of my way, and I want a clear lap. You little And it has me thinking attacker. a lot about, yeah, it has me thinking about, like, what is, what is my, what is my, like, because I've been saying for a while, like, I don't really know what I want from motorsports right now other than to keep doing it, but I don't, I don't have a lot of direction right now. Like, I'm doing a lot with Bridgestone, and I'm doing a lot of things that interest me, but there's not, like, an end goal right now, which is totally fine. I think as long as I want to keep doing that, that's great. <laughs> But I'm like, maybe I, maybe I want to do something where I'm just like chasing the time a little bit more, especially like on a road course. 
So Maybe. I've been thinking about that a lot. I don't know where that hey, goes, but t- Tom, stop tapping and what? touching the microphone. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> you were doing it without realizing it. You were yeah, I was thinking. You were. I could. Be, I could hear your hands like manipulating it a little bit, but then you started tapping on it like a drum. <laughs> I was like, all right, I gotta say something. <laughs> Did it all come through? Uh, like a little bit, but I, I think if somebody's listening to it in their car, they won't hear it. They'll hear the tapping for sure, but not the other stuff. No, my thought came through. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. yeah, it did. yeah. Your thought wasn't interrupted by the main handling of the microphone. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm Good. sure there's, I'm sure there's plenty of builders that would be interested in, uh, what a Tom Gorman lap would look like in their car. Maybe I, f- I think time attack would be fun. I want to try to. But you would want to drive like something kind of bonkers then, right? Not necessarily. I th- I think doing something at the front of either like GTA or Grid Life would be fun. I don't know that SCCA has the gravitas that I would want. Not gravitas. Um, Like scale. Like I would want some competition. I would want some like gravity behind it. Where I feel like SCCA has got a lot of classes and a lot of like access, but maybe not deepest competition regularly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if un- so, I don't know if unlimited. Like street or- yeah, I don't know if unlimited and uh, grid life is like the most cutthroat place to be right now. And in any ways, so also it's just the barrier of entry is so high that it's like mostly about the car and not really about the driving. Yeah, well, not even that. It's it's so much about getting the car even there, or like even completing a lap, which is like yes. sounds like the worst part. It's literally all the worst parts of motorsports. I'll never kind of the time attackers yeah. are built different, dude. <laughs> I don't understand. I even uh, <laughs> I messaged the uh, the pro awesome guys after this weekend and just said something like, "Hey, if you guys are interested in going to pit race, uh, I know of a little event that's going to be having a test day there right before Grid Life." Like, kind of nudging them. Yeah. Because, uh, by the way, ASM is having a test day right before Grid Life at pit, uh, Pittsburgh. What weekend is that? In case people want to just show up that's just for that. Thursday, October tenth is our day. And Grid Life is October 11th through 13. Yeah. Maybe, Tom, I will. And anyway, they were like, go ahead. Maybe by then I'll sell an F-150, so I'll have an FRS. So if anybody needs a truck, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think there's a part of me that thinks that I, I priced it so low that people are thinking something's wrong with it. And that's why it's taking uh, long to sell. What's, what did you, you listed it for 15? No, 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 no. I listed it for nine originally, but like if you look at yeah. this truck on online, first off, you don't see many private parties of the truck for whatever reason. They're all dealers. So it's all like ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars for like the same thing. So I was just like private party, a yeah. couple thousand dollars less, like should be fine. But right now I have it at eighty five hundred and I would literally I would take seventy five hundred for it just because I've been selling it for a month and a half. And normally when I list a car for sale, it sells like within the week. Cause I just don't like dealing with it, but I'm not going to take like a super loss on the truck. So we tried like putting an actual sign in it. That still work. My dad brought that up. I don't know. Does that still work? I feel like that wouldn't work. I don't know. It, I feel like the people who contact you would probably not be obnoxious. Yeah. Or maybe they're extra weird. I don't know. I hate <laughs> dealing with marketplace. So I feel like marketplace is a, a waste of time. Trying to think of how else you would sell Dude, stuff, though. Some of the messages I've been getting are just like freaking wild, man. It's just like I get like weird stuff. The, hold how on. many people want to trade you for a gun? I haven't gotten any gun trades. I don't think it's that cheap. Is there any like, is there any $8,000 guns? I don't know. I have my jet ski listed for sale right now, and I'm dealing with the same problem that I'm not finding anybody serious, but I'm getting so many offers for trades for dirt bikes and guns. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want a I gun. Want, I want money. <laughs> If I wanted a yeah. gun, I would buy a gun. <laughs> can I like, can I, sh- what am I going to do with this after? <laughs> <laughs> can I sell this? <laughs> but actually, I don't even, I don't even know how selling a gun, uh, a gun works. Or like, do I go do crime to try to make the money back up? I don't know what I understand. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> All right. I got one particular weird mes- message that I'm going to bring up on here. So somebody goes, hi, is this available? Like every Facebook marketplace thing starts. And I go, it is. Uh, it says, does it have a clean title on Carfax? And I was like, it has a clean title. I've never pulled a Carfax on it, but I have the VIN. Uh, they go, uh, yes, please. If you don't mind, it looks like a really sharp truck. So I give them the VIN say, here you are. Sorry. That took a while. I had a long day. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, which I messaged the next day cause they never responded back. 
uh, and they go and they this person responds, "Thank you for the follow up, but we bought one a few years ago." <laughs> what? What does that mean? What does that mean? Why did you reach out to buy my truck if you bought a truck a few years ago? Why did you? Why did I waste my time getting you the VIN? I <laughs> dude, like this is like I don't. What do you? What I just you feel like that? I'm dealing with a bunch of Russian bots. Like I don't think yeah. these are real people. No. <laughs> Although that's spectacularly stupid. That has to be a real person. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just like <laughs> I. Well, I just I wanted to respond. I like I don't want to aggravate people because I'll get a low like rating on the marketplace, and I don't know if that yeah, affects. Yeah. I don't know if that affects like wh where your ad shows up or not, and I just want people to see the ad. Uh, but I I wanted to send like that like Jackie Chan like like animate like the thing where he's like holding his hands up to his head. He's like what? Like what? Yeah. The, you don't make sense. Yeah, that's what I I wanted <laughs> to put that up. So, but I didn't. I just left a message on Red and just. Moved on to the next. Is this available? So yeah, I don't guys. Know what I would say to that, yeah, guys. If anybody, if anybody needs an F one fifty that runs, it's mechanically perfect. It just has a little rust on the rear bumper and the tailgate. No rust anywhere else. It is. It is, guys. Statistically, it is DJ's most reliable vehicle. <laughs> Look, I have. I've only taken it on the racetrack once, so there's no way it's breaking. And that was for lead follow. Wait, didn't you do laps at auto? Didn't you do Autobahn and uh, Mid Ohio? No, no, I was too slow at Autobahn in the truck because I was afraid of pushing braking zones. Because I'm like, it's a freaking five thousand okay. pound truck. Like I would accelerate on the straights and then I would coast all the way down. And it was so I was so <laughs> slow during the lead follow laps that, um, and this was on the old tires. I've since replaced the tires, so you don't have to worry about the tires being all, all messed up. Um, but I was so this slow. This is just the lab for your truck at this point. Yeah, that's the, this is what the podcast has turned into, guys. But I was going so slow that I was getting called through the like the Bluetooth uh, sound system or whatever in the in the truck. I answer the call and it's somebody going, "Hey, can you speed up for the lead follow?" And I'm like, "I'm in an F-150. What did you guys think was gonna happen when I came when I went out in this thing?" So they didn't let me. They do probably lead. heard you were big on iRacing. <laughs> they didn't let me do lead follow in a F-150 anymore. <laughs> it must have been Gordon that I'm thinking of who did it at Mid Ohio. Uh maybe. I mean Mid Ohio. I know I've seen I, a truck at Mid Ohio. That I it's never been on track at Mid Ohio. Christine's car has been on track at Mid Ohio. Uh but I was <laughs> I was asked Does she do, know that? Uh I think so. Um she does now. Does now. <laughs> um <laughs> when uh, I was asked to do the lead follow at mid Ohio. And I said, last time I did it in a truck, I made everyone mad. I don't think I should make everyone mad. And then, uh, I got thrown the keys to a Camaro. And then the time after that, I got thrown keys to an NSX. So big upgrades from F-150 to do lead follow. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a good way to further your career. If you just show up to a racetrack, guys, I only have a truck. Can I drive something else? Guys, how am I supposed to drive a truck on a racetrack? Actually, guys, yeah. I, I've decided truck's not for sale. This is genius. <laughs> um, I had another question about something. I lost it again. Uh-oh, I talked about but that was it from That was it from VIR. No, no, we got... Somehow we got on the selling the truck stuff, but that was it from VIR, pretty much. It was fun. Um, shoot, I had another question about something that went on this week. Um, oh, it doesn't matter. I think, go ahead. Uh, the intern at work who I've been uh fighting against in Mario Kart, uh, he's yeah. getting, he's getting pretty fast in karting, he's getting there. Oh, you guys are you guys are still going to karting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like five minutes from work, so he's uh, he's getting ready to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So we went karting one last time. I think the official like office karting is. This next Monday, but, but it's, it's been fun to watch, uh, uh, somebody who was like, liked motorsports. And then you kind of like, you give them like the drug essentially. And then they're just like, you can just see them on their own little journey. It's fun to watch that. So. Yeah, I could, I could see from, um, I mean, you're, you're getting there, but at this point now going back to autocross events, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. 
and most of the peers that I have from the time that I was getting into it are now on their, you know, 30 and 40 year careers with this. So watching the people who like either are getting the bug or they were like maybe getting the bug when I was around the last time, six, seven years ago. And now they're like in, in, yeah, I'm trying to think of an example of that person necessarily, but it's fun to watch that. See, get planted. <laughs> it's yeah. really fun to watch. Like, yeah. And you're like, because it, uh oh, it, they it, got they got it. It doesn't take for everyone, right? Like you'll see it, and you're like, and oh. like you you can kind of see it too. Like you just know, like uh, this isn't their thing. But you could tell, like you're like, oh, 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 this is this is a this is a potential junkie. Like you could just see it yeah. like happening. I don't know. I don't even know what it is that you see, but you could see it with people. Like you'll be interacting with them, and they'll be like, "This is my second autocross event," and I'm like, "Well, I'll see you uh, for the next ten years." Yeah. You just know. Yeah, yeah. I had a I met this uh there was a guy that was on the crew this weekend named Andy who um he just bought a Rush SR, so he wants to get into racing those. But he's been doing track days and time trials in a couple different cars and he was just on the like the the pit crew for the weekend. Um so I didn't get to like drive with him this weekend, but he asked he came up and asked a bunch of really good questions and introduced himself and we have a lot of mutual friends. So for him, I think part of what you're talking about, like I don't know what I see but I can see that you got it. A lot of that has to do with just the, the get it of the questions like this guy. Okay. How often do you get someone, or maybe you get every once in a while, someone walks up, like, how do I become a race car driver? How do I become a professional? I want to drive cars for a living. Like those big questions. That's not even a question. Like that's not, that's an unanswerable thought. Yeah. You're um, like, let's describe every possible pathway that every, cause like the thing is, is like, <laughs> especially like the, how do I become a professional race car driver? It's like, all right, there's a bunch of people who have the one path, which is just write a big check. Everyone that doesn't follow in like fall into that category where they don't write their own check. There's like a million different pathways, like where somebody had somebody yeah. else write a check or they found a way into this team or they made the right friend or, or they were like a killer in carts and they went and raced in Europe for a while. Like everyone has like, just like crazy interesting journeys like you won't find two journeys that are the same so that's like an impossible impossible uh yeah. question to answer totally um and then like so there's that type of question and then there's like the, this guy andy that i met who he basically said like here's kind of where i'm at with motorsports i've been doing it for this long i've done a couple time trials i've done a couple champ car races i've shared the track with people in competition but i really don't know where i like take the next step what would you recommend based on your experience? And it was like, that's a get it question. Like you see, you see what's happening, you get it. And you can ask a question based on what's actually possible rather than like asking a question based on an idea. Yeah. Um, and I was able to kind of like, okay, you've got this rush SR. That's a fantastic way to get into a field full of spec cars where you can really see exactly where you rate. Mm -hmm. You're going to have someone to race with where you're at. You're going to have someone to aspire to. And, you know, and that's going to put you way closer to where you want to be than, for example, going to a, a Skip Barber school or something. Yeah. Um, so that's like an actually answerable question. Um, I think that's probably what it boils down to when you meet these people who are, uh, you can see in some way, whether they say it or act it, that they have that get it, that they're willing to even like, a lot of times it has to do with humility too. Like they're humble enough to just like take information rather than like be plowing on this path that they don't really know. I think that's probably yet, the biggest know? tell, right? Is, is the people that they're, they're actively seeking information. I think that might be the biggest tell of like, Oh, this person, I'm going to see them around for the next decade is the people who are actively yeah. seeking information opposed to the people who kind of, yeah. Like they're like, I don't want to say like blazing their own trail, uh, but like moving forward without feedback is probably like the better way to, to phrase that. So like, the yeah, or like living it, living in the conceptual phase of things or like they're thinking about things a lot, but they're not actually like, it's like the difference in good and bad goal making that we talk about here. Yeah. We're like, it needs to be a tant, like, if, if, like for example, like a terrible goal is like, uh, get better at driving this year. It's like, uh, how do you even measure that? like yeah the way you would measure that should be what the goal is but like just some abstract is not not the that's not doing anything um i think 
like thinking back to uh, when me and you met and I was asking you questions because I, I told you uh, this was in 2017 where I, I just started asking questions. I was like, hey, I'm sim racing and I'm autocrossing. I want to race wheel to wheel at some point. Like, what do you think I should be focusing on? And you told me sim racing. I did? Yeah. You said, uh, I, the question was phrased more of like, what do you think helped more in your, uh, like in your wheel to wheel, uh, like the mm. racing, what do you think it was, uh, like the time spent in autocross or in sim racing? And you said, it, you said it was sim racing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see why I said that. Um, yeah, I always I, that that answer changes depending on the timeline because I went through a phase where I resented the amount of time I spent autocrossing. I felt like I wasted time to an extent, but um, I think I would have been mostly over that at that point in 2017. This I'm talking like the first couple of years I started road racing, I just felt so behind because I was this like 23, 24 year old like adult trying to like find my way into racing against a bunch of kids kind of like yeah. most of the kids that I was racing were younger than me and they were doing it with their family in a way that was like it wasn't just their mom and dad there like mine <laughs> <laughs> helping as much as they could it was like a thing uh anyway uh uh uh, uh Nats so yeah I've, I felt like I wasted time autocrossing instead of getting into road racing but now I relish the fact that I had like took my time with it instead of plowing forward which was one of the other questions he was asking like do i should i go to a school or should i you know take two or three years to get a lot of events under under my belt uh and i i have the same answer like i don't think unless you need your license for a school sorry for an event soon you should go to a school like if you're not on a timeline don't don't go to a school you could maybe go to a comp school and like pick up a couple things here and there like you did yep but i i still get the impression i never went through comp school I get the impression you didn't get anything from comp school other than track time. The track time was really cheap. It was like only 300 bucks. Yeah. And I drove, I drove like four hours on a racetrack, which for like 300 bucks, like that's awesome. If anything, that's yeah. great. But the, like the one takeaway, and I've told the story on the podcast before was from like this old man who didn't say anything to all of comp school, but then all of a sudden he started talking and the whole like class turned around and the one takeaway was <clears throat> if there's a car spinning in front of you, look at the wheels and that will indicate which way it's going to go. So which way the wheels are spinning or if they're locked, that's going to be the indication of where the car is going to end up. So you don't like end up swerving in the way that it's about to hook and go. And when he like said that, I was like, oh my God, I would have never thought of that. I'm glad, mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. And it's something... <clears throat> Uh, to this day that I'll think about is like somebody's like maybe spinning in front of you. It even works in eye racing. Somebody spinning in front of you, you like instantly look at their wheels, which way are they moving? Uh, Cause that's generally the way that the car is going to flick. If they're completely still, it's just going to keep going in the same direction. It's going like, that's like, yeah. I don't know. Unless somebody like told me about that. I don't know if I would have just like, I don't know if I would have just, I, maybe I would have figured that out on accident because I got lucky once. Oh, Tom, are you still there? That was weird. Hello, Tom. Are we still recording? Yeah, we're still recording. I don't know. Just Discord died. <laughs> you want to start so, the stage back up? <laughs> yep. Got it. Um, sometimes Discord does weird things. I'm glad it's still here. Or that would have been a weird episode. But yeah. <laughs> Attempt two. Nice. Um, uh, throw up the lizard brain uh, thing. Uh. Anyways, so like that was that was like my biggest takeaway uh, from comp school was like seat time and like that one that one yeah. thing that that guy said. Uh, and from your from your experience, I told I told Andy this this uh, guy I was talking to like if you do a comp school or if you do a school, make sure that part of the like value of it is just the time that you're going to drive. Like yeah. if you go to a whole comp school weekend and you don't learn anything like valuate the weekend on like, am I getting a bunch of track time for 300 bucks? So I'm, I'm glad I gave him that advice based on what you just said. But also I feel like I didn't get as much out of that comp school as other people did because I had so much experience in iRacing, like all like the, the racing etiquette and the rules and like stuff like that. Like that stuff was ironed yeah. out 
via carts, uh, Forza, iRacing, right? Like just like years of like, like maneuvering and racing other people. Like, look, I know Forza is kind of a weird example of that. Yeah, but you like, what do you know? Like, what have you ever done with it though? Like, I know you played Forza and you probably think you know the Nurburgring, but like, what have you done with it? <laughs> I remember when, um, <laughs> when we were going around, dude, I remember being in comp school because comp school was the third time I was on a racetrack. So we're going around comp school and they're like, oh, we're going to go around the room and like tell each other about like your experience and stuff. And like people are like, well, I've been doing HPDE for five years and I've been doing uh, time trials and time attack for uh, two years. And I'm like, that guy, that guy has like at least like 50 events under his belt. And, like, and, and then everyone, everyone had the same example. And then they got to me and I'm like, uh, I've been autocrossing for four years and uh, I sim race a lot. And then like, like people were kind of staring forward. And when I said that, like everyone like turned around and like looked at me and I was like, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> everyone, like there's a little bit of like shoe squeaking. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? Oh, geez. That guy's <laughs> going to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, this is a good segue for our first email. Do you want to jump in? Do you have more thoughts on, I don't even know what we're talking about, but it's good conversation, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this, sure. we have an email you know? or a couple of emails that tie to this. Okay. Uh, yeah, sort I'll, of. Yeah, I'll kick the email song. Emails. Um, um, guys, by the way, we haven't said it in a while, but you can email us at podcast at lizardbrain.life or you can join our Discord server. There's a link in the description of the podcast where you can just type in questions and we'll answer them and we can keep track of them like these ones. Tom? Uh, so hold, hold on. on. Go ahead. I was thinking about just retiring the email. Yeah, we could probably do that. Because it costs me money eventually. every month. Okay. I was thinking. Oh, well, we should definitely cancel Yeah, it. yeah. Well, I was thinking having a domain would probably be useful. But the Discord is so much more useful than a website would be. Uh, and True. and the questions are so much easier to manage in the Discord than they are via email. And like, So Good the point. email has like right, so no value. If you want to be one of the last people to email us, you can email us. We'll clean it out. You know what, guys? Send your emails because we'll do an email episode. We're gonna clean it out and then I'm gonna shut it down. It's gonna be like a like a more of a in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> but but the the questions that we get are awesome and we like them and it just seems like it's easier for everyone to do it through the Discord. So the Discord yeah. link is in the description. So go to the description. You literally just click the link. You'll get a prompt to uh, maybe it'll take you to a web page or it'll have you download an app. It's super easy. It's super, super easy. So j just join the Discord. We have, uh, hold on, let me see. Uh, da, 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 88 are online. And then two, so we have 330 ish people in the Discord at the moment. So you could. Wow. Yeah, you could be uh, you could join a community. People post uh, autocross runs. People post uh, like questions about cars that Carlton uh, might answer. Um, it's uh, it's good. It's a good place to hang out. So, anyways, and well, we won't send you. We'll only send you one notification per week to tell you when we're recording. Um, that's true. So we're, we got a question. Good. We're pretty good about <laughs> the notifications, aren't we? We are. It won't be annoying. <laughs> um, we had a question last week that we answered that was, um, if either of us have opinions on motorsports groups like the Motorsports Safety Foundation or NASA, who do courses for instructors and coaches. And we gave our answers with the asterisk that we were not very educated on what it actually is. And we got a couple of responses of what it actually is of people who have done it. So I want to read those off. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank you for re uh, responding to us, guys, because um, yeah. <laughs> we really don't know what we're talking about on that. No. I think we more answered like what our thoughts on our instructor, what our thoughts are on instructors, maybe not necessarily like these certifications and these answers helped me understand a lot. So the first one was from Joseph Yang. He says, I don't know much about NASA. Hang on. I got to mute, mute my music, <laughs> try to lyrics and uh, reading. Uh, I don't know much, much about NASA. Um, did you, how do I make did you lose my... it? No, no, my window is covering up this, the words, and I can't make my window. <laughs> can't make a change <laughs> shape that I can it? see all the words. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Tom? I just need to know what it says between provide and insight. 
uh, it just says some. How is that? How is that single word on this uh, question block? It's, it's covered up on my screen. I can't make it move. <laughs> I, I want to see a screenshot. Oh, I found it. I found it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I don't know how, so how a window is blocking a single word. The world's smallest uh, Windows <laughs> window. All right. So this is from Joseph Yang about MSF certification. I don't know much about NASA, but I have an MSF certification. So I wanted to provide some insight into what it's about. Uh, Motorsport Safety Foundation, as stated in the name, really is all about the safety of the student and the instructor but in a more lizard way, as most of the curriculum is written by Ross Bentley, who is the OG lizard in my opinion. Dude, I need to text Ross. I want to have Ross on the podcast. Are you doing it right now? Um, no, no, I'm going to do <laughs> it later. I just saw you grab your phone. <laughs> I thought about it. it talk, uh, okay, so the, the, the course talks about a version of the Dunning-Kruger curve for both uh, the student and the instructor and ensuring the instructor shows up at the track with an open mind that they learn something rather than be an authoritative figure. That actually sounds It talks great. about how to create, it does. Like everything about this sounds pretty solid. So uh, we were talking out of our ass a little bit, but it says uh, it, it talks in how to create a connection between the journey of high performance driving and the prior success the student had in their own field of expertise. As a lot of drivers who show up at HPDE schools tend to have a lot of, uh, tend to have had success enough in their career to be able to find the time and money to start this hobby, which I think is a super smart correlation. Yeah. Uh, the, go ahead. No, that's, I was just going to say like, that makes, uh, I, I've actually haven't thought of that. I've always said that just getting to the racetrack is its own victory all on its own. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I like you think about how privileged you are to even have the time and the money to go do it. Obviously you have some kind of success going on in your life. So that's actually really clever. Yeah. And anybody can relate to that. Like you, I think everybody even just thinking of like your halo stuff to peter's discussion about how he related pursuing getting to be better at driving to his time like going through school to be a lawyer yeah you know, it's like there's and, a competitive aspect to it and he like he went full lizard with uh mountain biking so he used that a lot too yep yeah uh, so Joseph goes on, uh, the course has very little to do with car control or driving techniques besides advising the prospective instructors to avoid teaching the wrong things like do all of your braking in a straight line. Ross Bentley hates the approach of teaching the quote unquote safer way of driving on track because it leads to more dangerous situations down the road as students gain confidence with the wrong techniques and becoming too aggressive. Amen, sister. Holy yeah. cow. Uh, there's a lot more material, uh, but I think the above paints a pretty good picture of the, what the vibe of the course is. If the mentality, the mindset of both the instructor and the student and the appropriate methods of communication to stay in control of the student's behavior on track. It's, it's, uh, you oh, said it's if. about, it's yeah, about, it's about, yeah, it's mentality. about, not if. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's about that. Um, okay. So, so Joseph ra ra uh, wraps that up and then Kelsey K also chimed in picking back, piggybacking off of. What Joseph said, I've taken both MSF level one and two, and it's basic online safety training course. MSF level two, uh, it, or sorry, one is a basic online safety training course. Level two is usually a one to two day program where you immerse yourself into becoming an in-car instructor and doing so safely. You utilize previously MSF trained instructors as students who drive the car while you instruct them through a wide variety of scenarios that can happen with real world students and how to navigate them professionally and most importantly, safety, uh, safely. Uh, for level two, they assess you in segment of handling, difference in opinions, no, difference in confidence levels of students that you may ride with, checking vehicle safety and student safety, uh, as long uh, as, and also the instructor's capability to ride safely as an HPDE driver. No, ride as a safe HPDE driver. I don't know what that means. Um, Check the vehicle but, and student safely and also the instructor's capability as a safe. Oh, they check the driver. They check the instructor's driving. Sorry. Do they, yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, it sounds like they just check the driver for uh, competence, like where they aren't, they aren't like being they're a bad a example. Yeah, they're not a menace. That's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says uh, the last part is basically that many safety students, uh, many students do not uh, pass level two on their first time around as they learn each scenario, but they're not expected to, and you can reevaluate and learn more as you gain experience. Uh, it's great for someone new to giving in-car HPD instruction. So that all boils down to, it sounds like it's actually really healthy 
but I still think it's really important to understand what the job is of what level of instruction or coaching you're to be given when you're put in that role. Like, is it your job to be a camp counselor? Is it your job to be a uh, angry eyes race, race car driving coach and kind of like show up to the right job? <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like MSF is probably doing it pretty well now that I've, you know, read this stuff. Yeah. I also, uh, uh, man, Joseph Yang's a little bit of a wordsmith over here. Like the, how, honestly, like that elevator pitch, I want to buy in now. Yeah, dude. Like honestly, Ross Bentley should just come over and copy paste uh, Joseph Yang's like description of it, and I think he would probably get a lot more signups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for both uh, Joseph and Kelsey for writing in and kind of telling us a little bit about it. Because uh, any any uh, novice program that explains the dunning kruger curve i'm on board for the more people that understand yeah. that that's a thing the better this world is honestly i share i shared it with the uh, champ car team this weekend the dunning they kruger curve it. yeah uh one of them had heard of it before but they forgot what it was called so i explained it and called it back out and they're like yeah dunning kruger dunning kruger nice <laughs> the podcast came in handy for tom oh uh, we came up with some sort of like really roundabout compliment that was like uh i was it was it was kind of like have fun storm in the castle like good luck on your slope of enlightenment but yeah. that was like a dig a little bit of like if they didn't know what they were talking about yeah <laughs> nice uh i'm trying to think of how that would turn into a t-shirt we're gonna make a dunning kruger t-shirt eventually we have guys to. i'm an overthinker my my designs get they get too much i'm trying to do my, tom, my best to get tom has been in, there, in the but... lab He's in the lab trying to make I love your hair, hope you win t-shirt. And they're not getting anywhere. All I have is a stupid, I have a, st a stupid meme one. And I have, I can't, I, we can't put that on the I, storefront. I came up with one with a microphone with pink hair, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. going to make the cut. <laughs> uh, speaking of merch, right. we just went through and um, updated a bunch of merch, our uh, merch provider, uh, Spreadshop. They just got a bunch of like premium brands mm. as like things that you can put the logo on. So now we have uh, Under Armour and Adidas uh, sweaters and like quarter zips. So go if you're if you were hesitant before because you're like I don't know what brand hoodie that is and I don't want it to look like crap. Um, go get one now because it's Adidas and Under Armour. So like they should fit fine. The quality should be great. And uh, they should look good. Like the quarter zips, me and Tom were joking around. Like if, if we had a whole crew of those people, we would look like a pro race team. They are pretty legit. They're also $60. So no, we won't be offended if I think they were $68. Oh, they're also $70. Six, $60 was our cost. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we'll make $8 on it, guys. Woo, rich. <laughs> Profits. The, those margins yeah. are actually terrible. <laughs> If we had it in the business world, if we had a eight dollar margin on a sixty dollar project, we'd be fired. We would be so fired. <laughs> Our boss would be so mad that he didn't have a Porsche. Yeah, that he couldn't go go track his GT three Porsche. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Tom, right, you we posted do your lover lover hair hope win. <laughs> I yeah. kind of like it. It's so stupid. <laughs> Tom just posted a picture in the chat. Uh, if you want to see it? You have to go on YouTube. But it's, no, I'm. I was I, trying to get it. I'm saving it. What? I'm saving it. Oh, okay. It's gonna be the thumbnail. There. Oh no. Well, it's not going well. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know why Discord kept dying. Did I? Did I break it by clicking on the picture? Maybe. We should do another email and then call it. Okay. Oh, you already got nope. the stage going. I was I was just typing attempt three in all cap locks. All right. I'm going to pull up a pin message. Hmm. Uh, we'll do, uh, we'll do uh, Busby's because it's um, uh, relatively recent. Oh, that's not the thing I wanted to click on. There we go. Uh, all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, John Hunter's episode has me thinking the poster car thing. So John Hunter was talking about the poster car 
that you thought like that is the autocross autocross car. Uh, and I think everyone has one car that really gets us romantic about the sport. But for you guys, if you had someone willing to provide any track with any car, what, what would that combo be? Oh, geez. Hmm. Bucket list, show up and drive at any track car combo. Any track, That's any car. That, right? Yeah. Yep. I already know mine. Go for it. GT3 at Bathurst. That would be okay. that would be pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I like that answer. I'm going to be a little different just to be, and I'm going to say... I mean, I want to go to Macau. I'm going to say Macau, Street Circuit. Macau, huh? I kind of want to drive... I kind of want to drive that 914 that I autocross at Macau. <laughs> you know what? Okay, so the In GT like 2013 version where it's just like floating on the bias flies and I'm grabbing gears. Ooh, ooh, I want to do that. Okay, so the GT3 at Bathurst would probably be great because I would feel like a hero, probably pretty... Uh, I, think, I think I would... I think I'd be up to speed rather... Maybe, maybe this is part of the Dunning-Kruger curve, but I think I'd be up to speed like pretty quickly. I think GT3 cars, for the most part, are probably pretty easy to drive, and they make you feel like a hero. Correct? Yeah. I would be interested to hear... The only hesitation I have is I'd be interested to hear how much of like your actual, like, for lack of a better term, balls came into effect, effect to learn as quickly as you wanted to learn. Because I've been in this scenario before where I'm like, I know I'm fine, but I don't have the balls for this yet. I find tracks that I have a ton of laps in iRacing in and I get to that track in real life. The accuracy kind of makes up for like the, yeah, the, yeah, I, hear, the blood. I, I, I know what you mean, but I'm thinking like when I coached those radicals last year at oh, Road America, I yeah, know yeah. Road America and a radical SR 10 is like a sports racer. But when I got in that radical, I was like, I don't have the balls to be this fast yet. Okay, like it wasn't my job to be that fast. It wasn't like I was coaching whatever else. Like you could all die the scenario was thing. just like you could die in a radical. You could die in a GT3 car. I don't think I could die in a GT3 car. I, I think I would have to try to die in a GT3 car. Uh, point stands. I'd be curious to have any time of <laughs> any type. Any you have to make a pinky promise here, camera. Pinky promise that you will share the first time that you get or a time you remember. That you like, you realize the limiting factor is your bravery. Well, I, that I mean, that has happened multiple times before. So, like, it would take me probably like the whole weekend to like work up to it, especially if I come in rusty, right? Yeah. If, if like I haven't driven in like a couple months and then I like, for example, like this Friday, I'm driving a GT3 RS at Pit Race. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I guarantee in the three sessions I have, I'm not going to be flogging the car hundred percent by the end of the third session. Sure. So like, you might be though. I mean, maybe we'll see. I will see We'll see how, 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 uh, how I, uh, comforting the car is, right? Like if, if the car is giving me like, like I'm going to kill you vibes, then, then it's, I'm not going to be as willing to play. Yeah. Yeah. But if the car is like super playful and like easy to drive, then like, now I'm just playing, right? So I feel like sure. a well set up GT3, like a GT3 race car, not just like a GT3 Porsche or whatever. I feel like right. a well yeah, set yeah. up one at Bathurst, if it's giving me all the right sensations. I was explaining yep. this to a student the other day where we because we were talking about um uh VIR and how everything's the same except like the 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 slight right hander at the start of the upper S's in the sim. Everything else feels the same at VRR except that one spot because you get like a uh, you get like a float that you don't feel in iRacing. And in iRacing, it's kind of agnostic how the car like comes off of that curb. But in real life, if you don't come off of it flat, the car kind of hooks when it gets like back down to the ground. And that caught me out the first time I was at VIR because that was like a difference from the sim. Everything else lined up. Mid Ohio, the first time I was there, I drove it a bunch in the sim. Everything lined up exactly how it felt in the sim. So if I went to Bathurst and something instantly felt different, then that would like that would take me like down a little bit. Right. And then I would have to like figure out what was different. When I went to Road Atlanta for the first time, I was right up to speed because everything in the sim felt exactly like it did 
uh, in real life. So like there's, there's yeah. going to be like, you know, little nuanced differences, but if none of them like make, make me pucker at all, then like we should, we should be good. I don't you're know. You're totally right about the, like the car telling you you're fine. Totally right. Yeah. Um, also I posted a video of my, the GT three lap in the wet today. Uh, if you need some like tips for this weekend, it's not going to be raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but in case you want some inspiration on how to go fast. Yeah, oh, but did he post? I'm trying the, to trash talk here. You, Come on, I don't know. <laughs> did you post the full video? I don't know what I'm doing. Did he post the full no, video? I I will. I posted a reel of it, but it's like the important parts. Oh, uh, we were. I'll post the whole video. We were talking about your one lap, uh, lap in the office, uh, like two days ago, uh, about going through the kink because the intern was asking about the kink. He's like, "What is the kink at?" Because he's never seen pit race before. So brought up yeah. a, a video. I tried to find a video of you driving uh, at pit race. Um, and I was doing a bad job looking it up. So I just went to my video with uh, Mike uh, Kubiak's Corvette. And I was like, so I'm like lifting. And then like, I, I do get like the car at some kind of slip angle as I'm turning into the kink. But like, there's more time in here. Because if I turn in a little bit later and had a better angle in it, I could have carried more speed later into it. Right. Uh, so I was like explaining yeah. like the margin that I left because like, it's not worth it to me to like explore that. Um, and then I was talking about you at one lap with the GT three, like you were still on power at the apex curb. And I was like, I like squared it up and like, like slowly lifted out and was like, just getting the car, like a stable platform, like right before I hit the brakes. And you were like taking up that little, that margin that I left because like the way you were entering the corner. And I was like, I will not be doing that on Friday. <laughs> honestly that car will probably feel so good through there Maybe. like you won't even feel like you're trying it'll just go through there like because you have downforce and stuff now yeah but how much downforce does that car actually have it has enough that you'll feel trust me the difference in like a fifth gen viper and a fifth gen viper acr the acr is like, had i know that's an extreme ton. example yeah, but a, a gt3 rs is pretty extreme too okay well next week guys on the podcast i'll report back on how it feels Dude, I can't wait. What are you doing this weekend? Okay, should we wrap it up? Has it been an hour and a half? I don't even know what time yeah, it is. Yeah, but what was your what would your uh oh your combo would be oh the, the Montgomery 914 on uh at so, I feel like you'd run out of gear very quickly. I, I want to drive something that I have to drive. Like I don't want to drive a GT3 car, but that that's the fastest thing that races at Macau. So I want to drive something, maybe like a 992 cup car, something that moves around a little more. But I thought like honestly, just give me like a F Street Camaro through that track. I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Something on bias. I, mean, bias I want would be something really that fun. I am like up on the wheel and have to like float and, and link things together. Like I don't just want to like carve through it. I want to feel like I worked for it. So, something on bias plies would be pretty fun. Not like super powerful where like you feel like you're like driving on eggshells, but like something kind of yeah. rowdy. I don't know what that would be. But that, would, that would be pretty 914. good. 914. Maybe. I'm thinking like, uh, you know, those like Goodwood vi videos where it's like all those mini Coopers, like freaking completely sideways everywhere. That would be, yes. that would be pretty rad. Yeah. That's like, what I, that's what I want to look like, but I want to have like, I, I posted a video. If you, if you haven't ever seen this track, it's, it's one of the tightest street circuits in the world. It's the only track in the world that has a permanently understanding yellow corner. That's so tight that you're not allowed to pass there ever. It's just understanding yellow all the time. Um, yeah, you should. Pretty amazing. Should but I want to drive something rowdy there. You should see that corner worker's arm. It's like a freaking beast, dude. It's like a tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you think they just put it on there a robot, Matt, right? Why do they have it as a person? They should just like put it on a thing that. Yeah, they don't have it as a person for real, right? It's a flag. It's a light. It's a light. Is right? it a light or is it a person waving a flag? I think it's, it's a person a waving light. a flag. Well, I mean, a light makes way more sense. <laughs> Maybe they, I don't know, making jobs. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> Trying to stimulate the, the, the M Macau um, economy. Macau economy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe. Um, yeah. What are you doing this, this weekend, Tom? Dude, we're hanging out a pit race, but we're doing a little bit. Ooh, well, we're kind of doing different where are you things staying? here and there. Were you going to stay at my house and then I'll we'll carpool to the racetrack or what do you want? 
we'll see. Okay. So I'm auto crossing. I I'm auto crossing Alex Peel's uh GR86 against your ass. Bring it on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I think I I, I think I'm taking Dan Howard's um BRZ, but if not, I'm gonna drive with somebody else. Uh, uh and then you got way more fun stuff going on than I do. What are you doing? I mean I'm going to whoop. Tell us everything. I'm going to whoop some Tom McGorman ass this weekend. Tom's on the wrong bump stops, everyone. He doesn't stand a chance. Guys, I can't wait to do a GR86 event, like a whole event. I'm not going to talk about the setup once. I'm not even going to bring up the Guys, setup once. I want to I'm, I want to turn that into a button because the next week when Tom's talking about uh, inside wheel spin and how some white bump stops on the front of Alex Peel's car would have really helped him out. I could oh, just play white. that button. It's because there's there's red's the softest, white's the middle, and then blue's the stiffest. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got you have the red, so you, you, the inside rear tire comes off the ground. Well, I will say I got a preview of the course designs from the course designer, and I picked the day that wow. I thought looked more for me. Wow, I think I uh, sense an unfair advantage. Tom's <laughs> photographic memory, looking at these courses. I've already, <laughs> I already got it in the simulator. <laughs> I'm gonna go practice all night. Oh my goodness! Dude, well, you don't stand a chance. Yeah, bump no, stops. Who? You're on the wrong. You're on the wrong brake pads <laughs> and the wrong bump stops. So I think I think I stand a chance. <laughs> uh, Todd, uh, BRZ is going to be a little different than a GR86. We'll talk uh, after uh, the recording. He yes, asked what bump stops do yeah. I need. DJ, spill about your weekend. Tell us the fun stuff you're doing. Oh, I'm driving a GT3 RS on Friday for a track night in America. I will get zero clean laps, but that's fine. I'll be making beautiful noises. Um, and then I'm, uh, yeah, I'm doing a two day, uh, autocross and apparently Tom will be there and, uh, with, uh, Peter Schnorr, it's the last autocross event before nationals. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. It's going to be fun. So yeah, it'll be good guys you should come out and hang out. If you're in the area at pit race this weekend, it'll be a good time. Maybe we'll do some carding, Tom. You want to do some carding at some point? No, your face said yeah. no. I don't love carding. I worked at a cart track too long to love carding now, but I do love hanging out with my friends. So if you do want to come hang out, <laughs> so I, I forgot it's track night on Thursday or Friday, but I might come up Friday and then I'll maybe get a hotel Friday, Saturday or something. I don't feel like commuting four hours extra all weekend. I mean, is that just, diva of me? You'll just be hanging out with your with your boy. We're just what if uh, maybe I'm gonna sleep in one of the little towers? They got a t bunch of towers there. Yeah, you could probably maybe find I'll a sneak place in to one sleep. of those. Yeah, I bet you could find a place. You like you set up an air mattress in like the pro shop. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did that at Blackhawk once. So yeah, come uh, come hang out with us at Pit Race. If not, then uh, I don't know. Follow along with live timing and. Uh, Give one of us shit in the Discord. That sounds fun too. So, all right, Tom. Unless it's me, don't give me shit. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, last last you can announcement. Give me shit. We had a lot of good announcements this week, but uh, next week we will have our friend Kenton Cook on the podcast. We're recording on what do we say Monday at? Uh oh. Uh oh. We'll confirm the time. We're recording with Kenton <laughs> Cook next week seven. for sure. It's either Monday or Tuesday. So, if you have questions for Kenton, uh, if you're not familiar, Kenton and I were teammates in IMSA in 2018. Uh, he was part of the Mazda ladder up through prototype lights that basically should have put him into GTP cars, you know, the equivalent at the time and works as a driver coach and all that. So if you want questions for him, send them in and that's it. He flies planes. He sim races. Oh yeah, he flies planes. He, uh, he, he autocrossed at one point. That's how I met him. Mm -hmm. So lots to talk about with Kenton Cook. Definitely. But otherwise, that was a lot of fun, guys. I uh, I appreciate all of you. Make sure you get out there. Be demure, mindful. I love your hair, and I hope you win. 